Hey, Kayak Mike here. So I'm gonna go over in this video, uh, there's gonna be no fish caught in this video. It is essentially how you set up a drag in a kayak. Uh, these instructions can go both ways, kayak, boat, it doesn't matter. You literally use the same exact steps. Um, but in these tournaments that I'm fishing in, one thing that kind of deters people from joining is they may not know every form of fishing possible or, you know, they're. I don't want to say they're stuck in their wades, but they're suspend fishing when dragging's working, or vice versa. They're they're only trying to drag when you know maybe suspend drifting is what you need to be doing. So I'm going to do a little series here that goes over uh, bumping, dragging, suspending, anchoring when they are all useful, the best times to do them. Um, and then once you know the general usefulness of all of them, then you can start breaking out into your own personal subsets. For example, I don't suggest dragging against more than one mile an hour current. Uh, some people have success dragging against more than one mile an hour current. I do not. So my suggestion is going to be dragging in a river works one mile an hour current and lower. Sometimes it doesn't even work in one. Um, just depending on the undertow at, of the spot of the river you're on. But dragging will always work in a lake, all times a year. Uh, dragging temperatures, you typically want 45 degrees plus uh, to be successful dragging, and that's river and in lakes. And when the water's coming up, you could typically get away with dragging once you hit about 40 to 45. Uh, you have to go very slow. Uh, when the water's coming down, the bite typically stops dragging about 45 degrees. And again, these are my experiences. And I mainly fish the Ohio River. I'm not in lakes as much as some other people, but we actually get cold up here. Um, there might be some people down south watching this saying like, oh, in the winter, we still drag upwards of a half mile an hour. Uh, you are also down south. Your water rarely ever drops below 50, 45 degrees. Um, just in a few months here, we're, we're not gonna see anything over 45 for a few months. So this video is gonna go over exactly what you need to do to drag. I'm going to do everything with my motor and I will have little tags around with what buttons you need to press to do exactly what I'm doing. A lot of us have the XI3. However, you do not need a motor to do any of these things that I'm going to show you. I did everything before I had a motor. Now, it's just more efficient now. That's the only catch. Now I get the nap instead of paddle. Um, whereas before I would have had to paddle this entire time and now I, you know, now I have the luxury of being able to nap. So I never want someone using the excuse, I don't have a motor, therefore I cannot do what you're doing because I've been there without a paddle. Everything I'm gonna show you, except for bumping, bumping's the only thing that is not possible without a motor, but everything else is more than possible uh, without a motor, you know, when we anchor fish, when we suspend fish, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's get into, today we're gonna show you how to set up a drag. This can be applied to a lake or a river. Uh, like I said, it's optimal one mile an hour or less once you're in a river. Um, so yeah, let's just get right to it. Uh, first, we're gonna go over the we're gonna go over the rig. You know, we're gonna go over a more standard rig. So here is a rig that I use in the Ohio River. I use, if you go back into my How I F Efficiently Fish video, I use a three-way swivel right here, T-swivel to be exact, um, and then I use clips for my leaders and I use clips for my dragging weights. So you got your T-swivel. Now, uh, this is a longer leader. You're going to have to play with leader lengths yourself to figure out what works and what bodies of water. But this one is about, I don't know, two and a half feet to the first hook. There's a Chris Souders video on how to make this dropper knot. And then I have another two and a half feet, three feet to my next hook right here with a smaller peg float, the smaller peg, and you're gonna have to play with peg float size. So today on two of my rigs, I have giant peg floats. You can see that one. But that is because I'm rocking a double hook rig in one piece of bait and I need that bigger float to keep those baits off of the bottom. And then I use rattles as well. I think rattles do help. I don't necessarily think they attract the fish, but I do think once that fish hits, it helps them retarget the fish. Remember, about 10 feet down, in the middle of the day, this sun, there's no clouds out today, middle of the day, about 10 feet down, it is pitch black. So when you are 
30, 40, 50 feet down like I am, anything that can help the fish retarget the bait is useful. Um, and then my final hook. So the way this drags across the water, I don't know if you can see the bottom, this is too long of a, a leader. So this will be about two and a half feet off the bottom, not even. This one will be about four and a half feet off the bottom. Um, in the Ohio River, when I'm fishing deeper water, I use these longer leaders. If I ever do a video going over how I drag, like on Cowan Lake, my double hook leader will literally not even be as long as it is to this first hook. So now let's get to the important part. This is the part that confuses most anglers. What I just showed you, the majority of anglers can do. They can buy their weights, they can set up their leaders and all that fun stuff. All right, so before I start my drag, I get my lines, my back two lines down to where the, uh, the weights are just in the water. I'm gonna get my front lines in too. I normally have all my lines in the water essentially ready to go before I start moving. I do not cast my lines out when I'm dragging um, just because I feel like there's too much room for error when you cast your lines out. Now there's a bunch of people like, like Ryan Bortz, he casts his lines out, my friend Pam, she casts the lines out. And if you cast your lines out, you can get to, get to dragging a little quicker but who's to say when you casted it, something didn't go wrong when you casted it, the line didn't tangle. Um, and another big thing also, I don't use uh, sinker slides. I hate them. I despise sinker slides. I have everything fixed to my T-swivel. Um, but that's just a personal preference. I have my reasons. But yeah, I have all my baits in the water ready to go. All I need to do now is start moving. I don't like casting my baits out before I start my drag because there's just too many variables that can go wrong. And today we're also gonna use planer boards. So to begin your drag, this is the part that people real, I'll, I'll put a little remote and I'll like highlight the buttons that I'm pressing. So I'm currently in spot lock, just holding myself here real quick. So we're gonna unspot lock. We're gonna get that motor straight to essentially the, the route that I wanna take. We're gonna hit up about five or six times to get close to a mile an hour. Once you're over a mile an hour, you can hit cruise control and then you can adjust your speed up and down from there and I'll explain what that does once we get there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I hit up about seven times, looking down at my fish finder. I'm at a mile an hour. Now you wanna hit north, true north, right here. Or not true north, I'm sorry, just north or cardinal direction. We call it cardinal direction on the motor guides. And then once you are going in your carnal direction over one mile an hour, you hit, it's called the cruise control button. Once you hit that cruise control button, the motor is trying to go one mile an hour in the direction you were just going. Every time you hit up and down now, it's going to go up and down a tenth. So in theory, if I hit down seven times, the motor's going to try and be going 0.3. I drop my back two baits now. And I like to thumb them on the way down, just so they're not as erratic when they hit the bottom. Once my back two baits hit, that's when I hit down on my trolling motor. All right, so we're in a river. I try and drag .3 in a river. I'm gonna hit down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My motor is now going to try and go .3 miles an hour. Once it gets there, if it's not reading 0.3, if it's reading 0.4.5 or 0 0.0.1, then I just adjust. Maybe I double click the button. Maybe the current or the wind's not allowing it to get to that spot where I want. But when I'm, when I'm dragging upstream in a river, I rarely ever go more than 0.3. So I'm letting line out, letting line out, letting line out. I like my back lines really long. I actually liked all my dragging lines long lined. So we're gonna let them out for a little longer. I'm not gonna go over how to put on a planer board, but I am about to put on planer boards. All right, we got plenty of line out. I'll fast forward through me putting on the planer boards really quick. An easy way to do it is put your rod in front of you right here. Because when your rod is in front of you, that brings your line closer to you. 
And then to learn how to do planer boards, um, you look up a different video. I'm not gonna go over how to do your planer boards. The only advice I'm gonna give is don't super glue this in unless you know you have it perfect. Uh, because I super glued mine in and it's not in the correct angle, so my board doesn't pull as hard as it should. So now that I have my planer boards running, I'm going to drop my front two poles. And these two poles are going to essentially be right here at, not at the kayak, but they're not going to be pushed out with planer boards. And again, I thumb these down. We are in currently 36 foot of water. I just dragged 50. We didn't have any um, hookups. We had some bites, but no hookups. So now I'm in the dead set middle of the river. That one just hit bottom. That one just hit bottom. So now let's check on the planer boards. That one is a good ways back. Ooh. That one's good ways back. My fish finder's reading 0 0.3, 0 0.2. This is my speed I'm talking about. We're gonna go up just one. The current is so weak today that I can actually get away with dragging 0 0.3, 0 0.4 if I want to. The reason you typically drag at 0.3 in a river is because you're going against current, so the current's going to naturally try and pull your dragging weights off the bottom. And then as much line as you want to let out, it's arbitrary. I like my lines way back. I just feel like I have more success that way. Uh, my hookup ratios aren't the best when they're that far back, but I feel like I get more hits, therefore more hits more success it's just my opinion all right all my lines are out um, I am now dragging up the middle of the Ohio River smack dab in the middle of the Ohio River 35 feet deep roughly yeah, 37 feet deep now and I got four baits out there I have two baits way far out uh, that are farther away from the kayak and I have two baits that are closer to the kayak right here I could probably get away with running six rods um, but I I'm not 100% sure how snaggy it is through this section of river quite yet so I'm, that's why I'm only running four also in our online catfishing tournament series at the moment you are only allowed to use four rods uh, so that's why I'm also running four but yeah let's go over the most important part of this video is how to set up your drag so we're gonna go over that again really quick what you do is you want to face where you want to drag and then you start moving with your motor once you start moving with your motor, try and get to about one mile an hour, hit cardinal direction or north, whatever, I think the, um, I think people with a uh, Minn Kota, it's, it's called north or something like that. Uh, but on the motor guide, it is you hit cardinal direction, the top left button. Once you hit cardinal direction and you hit a mile an hour, oh, you don't have to be at a mile an hour, you just have to be above it. Hit cruise control, that's the top right button. Once you hit cruise control, the motor's going to try and get you to a mile an hour. Once you do that, that's when I drop my back baits. Once my back baits hit, I grab my controller, I hit down to my desired speed. In this case, I hit down seven times. Every time you hit down or up, in theory, it tries to get the motor 0.1 less or more. So if I hit down seven times, in theory, my motor was trying to go 0.3, which it was. Once those are back, as far as I want, I either put my planter boards on or I engage the bales. And then once I do that, I let my front ones down. I let my front ones go down as far as I want. Then I engage those bales. And now you are dragging four rigs. I actually rarely use planter boards. I just wanted to have the planter boards in the video today because that adds a level of difficulty and it's not hard to do at all just to show everyone how simple it is. Now, if you were paddling, you would have had to do all this with paddle strokes in between. And yes, I have done that before. It is possible. So I don't wanna hear anyone saying, oh, you have the motor, you can drag, blah, blah, blah. In a lake, it's actually arguably easier to drag without a paddle. I'll have to make another separate series on that. Uh, that's called side drifting with the wind. Uh, you have to have a drift sock. Also, if I had any kind of side wind or anything going on today, what I would do to counteract that, I would just throw my drift sock out the back and then I'd be able to stay pencil straight into this current. So I hope 
that helps. Um, anyone who has a motor now, who is in our scene, I went over everything on how to start a drag. Uh, there should be no reason why anyone can't drag now. Uh, so anyone in our scene should be able to drag in a lake regardless of a motor or not. And anyone should be able to drag the river now. And again, I suggest doing this at one miles an hour and slower current. Um, I drag against the current at about 0.3 to 0.4 miles an hour, but I would not drag once the current breaks one mile an hour. I think there are better options for fishing at that point. Um, can you do it? Yes. Are there people who do it? Yes. But then you really have to know what you're doing and it's, it's a lot more touchy-feely, whereas this video series, this is meant to get everyone doing it, uh, not this isn't a high level uh, how to drag. This is entry level how to drag. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna put this on my personal YouTube page and on the online kayak catfishing or on the online catfishing tournaments page. Uh, this way, if there's people you know who aren't following me personally but still want to learn how to drag and they're part of the scene, they can go there. All right, kayak Mike out of here.